Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson. I'm a freelance consultant in Onyx Reporting. And today, I'm going to share with you guys how to build income statements that are not awful. And what I mean by not awful is there's no pre aggregation whatsoever. And you don't maintain code in Domo after it's been in. Oh, and no custom app. I think. Um, it's been my experience when I talk to uh, prospects and customers, they've, they've been told, oh, if I want to build an income statement or a balance sheet in Domo, I have to do magic ETL to pre-aggregate the data, or I have to buy a custom app, or I have to go like jump through all these hoops in order to have the thing. And so ultimately, a lot of people don't do financial reporting in Domo, which I think is a shame. I'm going to show you how you can do it by keeping the raw data from your transaction. No ETL on the raw transaction. Um, we're just going to take advantage of the chart of accounts that you have in your source system. I'm going to show you how to mash it up and do some magic stuff to it so that you can end up with a uh, income statement that either looks like this or like that. One says basic, the other one's advanced, and you're like, Jay, of course I want to We'll talk about what that is. All right. Um, in terms of the data that I'm using here, I'm going to be using raw data pulled from the Dynamics Nav ERP system. Um, what do they call it? It used to be called Navision, and these days it's called, oh my god, uh, Business Central. Yeah. So I'm using uh, data sourced from a real ERP system. Um, if you're using SAP or if you're using NetSuite, they all functionally work more or less the same. So like what I show you here is still going to apply. Um, so that part doesn't matter. And uh, let's just get the elephant out of the room. If you watched my tutorial on building a trial balance, um, that's a good foundation to start from. If you didn't watch my tutorial on how to build a trial balance, I'll include a link in the description, but do take a look at that. And let's go. Um, if you'll recall, a trial balance lists out every single GL account since the dawn of time. Boom, boom, boom. It also has a start point and an end point. It has a starting balance, ending balance, and a uh, net change activity that occurred in between. If you don't have a trial balance in Domo, there's no reason not to, because I already mentioned there's a tutorial video that shows you how to do the thing. You might be thinking, Jay. If I just slice that in half, because isn't that technically uh, an income statement? Yes and no, right? Like, yeah, you get the right answers at the end of the day, but your FD will tell you, like, no, I don't want to see individual posting accounts. When I have an income statement that goes out to the board or an income statement that the C-suite folk look at, we want to see it aggregated to totaling accounts. So in other words, I don't want to see every single individual um, sales account, I want to just see that rolled up under one account called retail sales, or whatever your chart of account. So yeah, what is the chart of accounts? Well, the chart of accounts is an object that exists in NAV or sales, not sales, NetSuite, whatever your ERP system is, um, there is going to be a place where you say, okay, these are my like individual posting accounts, but then I want when I want to do a roll up, I roll them up into what's called a totaling account, like total sales of retail. And that totaling account will span a range 6105 through 6195. And you're like, okay, well, what accounts are in 6105 through 6195? And then you have to like check and you're counting and you're like, oh, that's one, two, three, four, five accounts. Yeah, that part's terrible. That is also the reason why most um, BI reporting tools, and it really doesn't matter if it's Power BI, Tableau, Click, Jet Reports, um, or even Domo. That's why a lot of these tools are not super great at financial reporting, um, or why people have to jump through a lot of hoops in order to get your financial reports together, and then people complain about them not being flexible, again, because it has to be pre-aggregated, or you have to do like a lot of maintenance work to make sure that you're not missing an account. And Lord help you if you're doing it in Excel, because like VLOOKUPs are the worst. 
So this solution I'm going to show you uses none of that. I'll go over the code in another tutorial video, because if you don't write code, you don't want to look at code. Um, but the short version of the story is, is like I set up an ETL where after it goes into production with my customer, they never have to touch it again. It will just automatically. And I, I think that's pretty good. I'm proud of that. So what you got to do is you got to build a, you've got to build a table um, that that for each account in your chart of accounts says what are the sub accounts within it. And so I've run a MySQL ETL that uh, answers that question. Sorry, I don't know why the row number is out. And uh, let me get the join and let's see. Let's okay. <clears throat> oh, I lied. I want to look at uh, balance sheets or income statement accounts. Okay. Um, so we were looking at uh, 6110, and so on, right? Those are posting accounts. Check. But now, here, under the row called total sales of, total sales of retail, these accounts, for, for this individual, for this totaling account, it's broken up into this, these posting accounts. And then, of course, if I drop join number and join name from the axis, then it looks like a roll up of, uh, of one row, but it's actually five rows. And those of you who are like seasoned SQL developers, you're like, oh, yeah, I can take this table, I can join it to my, ET, uh, to my raw transactions using a fusion, and then I can build a glorious. And that's what we get here. Um, again, I said a lot of things very quickly, sorry. Um, I have a Fusion. And those of you who don't use Fusions, I'm not going to name anybody's name in this YouTube video, but you know who you are. Fusions are the best thing. Um, so I strongly recommend you figure out where they fit in your workflow. Um, ignore, uh, yeah, OK. So. In my fusion, I'm joining together this jail entry to this blowout table um, on the account number is equal to the join account number. Now, what's interesting uh, is this. My raw chart of accounts has 294 rows. So like from income statement all the way to row 9999, there's 294 accounts. But curiously, my blowout table has 1,380 rows. You might be thinking, Jay, why are you increasing the number of GL accounts? Well, remember that um, retail sales account. That one posting account is included in total retail sales. It's also included in total sales. As sorry, uh, it, profit margin. It's also included in net income before what is EBITDA? Whatever EBITDA is. And then it's also included in EBIT. And then it's also included in net income, or however many um, totaling and subtotaling accounts you have. So the point is, is in my raw chart of accounts, maybe I have, let's say, 200 posting accounts. But those 200 posting accounts exist across 1,380 um, total and subtotal, so it gets repeated which does interesting things to my data, right? Because my GL entry table has 2,823 rows, 2,823 2 transactions. But when I finish rolling it all up, I end up with 20,000 rows. So the data gets duplicated a bunch. And you might be thinking, but Jay, does that give you the wrong answer? Well, no. Let's see how this all comes.
So again, uh, I'm going to take the sum of amount. And you're thinking, oh, this has to be wrong, double entry accounting. It should net out to zero. But again, um, I'm duplicating rows. So double entry accounting no longer applies. <clears throat> if I just pop in uh, row number and row name, and then I filter on um, just my income statement. <clears throat> Hopefully this makes we know 6110 is a um, posting account, posting account, posting account, totaling account. And if I look at the math over here, 761 plus 98 plus 128, yeah, 128, that checks out. If I toss in totaling on the axis, I'm like, yeah, that number is what I expected. And this is good, right? Um, but if you want it a little bit more interactive, a little bit less, meh, you could, for example, consider popping in a pivot table, which is it is what I showed you guys earlier. So there's nothing new going on here. But you know, I just want to show you guys how I arrived at the final thing. We'll pop in join name. On. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna get this, and this kind of looks terrible. Because this is a posting account, sales, retail, domestic, sales, retail, EU, uh, EU. We know it's a posting account because there's no subtotal accounts underneath. It. Sorry, there's no accounts underneath it. Um, what you want to do with these pivot tables is you want to go to subtotals and you want to suppress single item subtotals. What that will do is it'll hide anything that doesn't have any kind of subgrouping. And then I can, when I collapse the node, then the only nodes that are left are actually total rows. It's a little hard to distinguish. So what I'll do is I will change the subtotal row font style to bold. OK, that's a little bit more visible. Now it's called total sales of retail total, but that's because the account name in NAV actually contains the word total. So that's superfluous. I'm going to use a dot dot to force it to suppress um, the additional label of total. And now we're, we're back to where I started. I love this, this is great. Now, um, somebody finish my thought. Oh yeah, filtering. That's what it was. I wanted to demonstrate to you guys that none of this data is pre-aggregated. So I think what most of the times I see when, when people uh, do this is they will, um, uh, do I have a posting group? Yeah, um, they'll, they'll add some sort of uh, filters that makes it so your data doesn't so your report doesn't respond to filters. Or, sorry, they'll add pre-aggregation to the reports, to the data, so that it doesn't respond to filters. But I can very easily um, go in here and apply the filters that I want um, to see the data or see the reports uh, filtered to those, those values. So it's not, I, that's a terrible way of saying it's not pre-aggregated, but that's it. gets better. Once you build out your blowout table, and again, I'll do another tutorial video where I cover that. But once you build out your blowout table, you can take it a step further. Because remember, your chart of accounts has posting accounts and totaling accounts, but those totaling accounts might be nested. What is JTOTAL? So remember, we've got uh, sales of retail domestic. That rolls up into a totaling account called sales of retail. And sales of retail rolls up into an account called, uh, into a totaling account called revenue. And revenue rolls up into net income before extra items and taxes. EBIT? EBITDA? I don't know. I'm not an accountant. But all of those things roll up into income. 
So, you know, it's conceivable that when you're putting your uh, income statement together, your FD might say, hey, you know what, for the stakeholders, I just want you to show the top level breakdown. So instead of showing each individual account, just show them one row called revenue and costs and operating expenses, et cetera. But don't show them the individual like sales, retail. But when we're looking at our, with our, we're sitting with the investors or the board of directors, they want to see it broken out by, you know, what percentage of sales came from sales retail, what percentage of it came from the sales of raw materials. And then when it gets down to the line managers or people actually in stores or what have you, maybe they want to see it at the highest level of granular lowest, most right. Either way, the point is you can add this ability to navigate across indentation while still showing the right. If you're really clever, you can fill, figure out a way to say, hey, I want to show both ending balance, the amount that occurred in the reporting period and the amount that occurred in the previous reporting period um, using filters and without hard coding data, because remember, we want our report to respond to all of the filters that are in the transaction. Um, and to give you a hint on how I did that without actually getting into it, um, I have a table called report date fiscal, which is um, all of the, the start and end of each year. And I'm using the join on join on one technique uh, that I cover in a lot of my tutorial videos. Basically, I do a cross apply. And <laughs> and it works. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what did I want to say? Um, and it works. Cool. I'm trying to get us back. Yeah. So that's going to be the end of this tutorial video. I hope you guys learned something cool about it how you can start approaching financial reporting in Domo. I, I hope you at least have hope that you can get it done. Um, talk, to your, talk to a good SQL developer, see if they can't help you out. If you get stuck, um, uh, I am a freelance Domo consultant, uh, and I'm happy to support you on your any sort of implementation, specific, you know, financial reporting implementation. Um, you can reach me at jae at onyxreporting.com. O-N-Y-X, I'll include a link in the description, blah, blah. And then I'll also, like I said, do a tutorial video on how I did the blowout. Cool, hope you found this useful. Catch you guys later.